Thank you for joining us. This is One Year in Government. I'm your host, Audlin Parker, and today joining me, I've got Minister of Amerindian Affairs, the Honorable Pauline Sukai. Good afternoon, Minister. Welcome. Thank you, and good afternoon. All right, so Minister, one year in government. How has it been for you in the office? Um, the one year has been pretty hectic, I would say. Um, when we got into office in my sector, which deals with Amerindian development, um, there were a number of shortcomings which we had to um, deal with. Um, we had made as a government a number of commitments um, in our manifesto um, that we agreed and um, promised the Amerindians that we will deliver on. So as soon as we got into office, you would know that we had the COVID, we mm -hmm. had to deal with COVID, but at the same time, we had to address our sector-specific um, promises and commitments. So immediately what happened, um, the Ministry of Amerindian Affairs participated in um, addressing the um, infection and the support for Amerindian villages that were affected by COVID. Um, so we did that for Region 8, Region 9, um, Region 1. That's in the very first week. Um, we were, there was not, no time to idle. Um, and then um, it was the period when we had to work without a budget. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, what we did was that we began to put in the, our plans for the upcoming budget cycle. The, promises and commitments which we have made. And in so doing, by the time budget was um, passed, we were able to ensure that the commitments made on re-establishment of the community um, service officer program, we were able to establish that. And we started off with 400 young people being provided with the opportunity to um, get integrated in supporting and contributing to their village development. Um, and they were provided with a um, stipend. Um, they were provided with activities by their village councils that will boost the activities in their community and village. So we were able to complete that um, immediately. We were also able to ensure that the presidential grant, which we promised them to increase in our first, as soon as we get into office, as soon as we got into office, we were able to do that. So within the year, we increased the presidential grant from 250 million to 300 million. And that brought additional um, support to um, stimulate additional economic activities and income in the village economy. So um, with the youths, we were able to provide um, just for stipend in, in the first half, uh, in the first year, approximately another $349 million into the village economy, which went to young people um, across the hinterland regions. We were also able during the period of um, the year mm -hmm to provide additional COVID economic investment funds um, to the tune of $1.736 billion. That provided um, a significant leap in the injection of um, finance and investment capital to the villages. We gave, um, it ranged from around 5 million to 15 million, depending on the um, size, uh, size of the village and the population. So when one consider 1.736 billion injection in, in a year, that's from August to um, July, mm -hmm. the end of July, um, that alone tells a story because um, villages that were starved of resources, finances, and even uh, other resources were now being able to access those resources to stimulate um, activities which have been on a low and so those activities, first of all, we were able to um, help them, to guide them. They proposed many projects. We reviewed it, and they are right now in, pro, in, in awaiting further approval. But 
those are some of the, if you want to say, the financial injections in the very early stages of the year. In fact, before half of the year um, was done, we'd had close to $2 billion um, dollars in just two projects. Um, this year also, which is I'm speaking about, we were also able to additionally provide 449 uh, million dollars in agricultural support with just machinery. Mm -hmm. um, that is, we have acquired 112 um, tractors which will go towards 112 villages um, and it will boost agriculture which is um, the foundation of many villages. It is also um, one of the main supporting aspects of their food security, but it would also help them to address and advance the sector in forestry, um, the transportation of goods and services, and of course in construction because they need to move materials, whether it is uh, forest products or other resources to assist them in building infrastructure, homes, etc. So that injection, again, um, even though it's not finance, but it's in the form of machinery, is going to take those villages a far way. It is going to remove them from a place where they're stagnant and move them to a place where they have the level of resources to work and to support their um, their, the economy and the activities that they're engaging at the village level. All right. So, Minister, I know you've said uh, quite a lot as it relates to the first year in office. What would you say were two of your major projects undertaken by the ministry? Um, basically, our ministry um, supports different sectors in Hinterland. We look at the youth, we look at women, we looked at um, agriculture, we look at ecotourism, we also look at um, welfare, um, education for our scholarship students, mm -hmm. and um, generally support for major developmental um, infrastructure. What I would say is one of our biggest achievement at the capital project program is um, the investment in young people. The investment in young people almost mirrors almost a billion dollar investment. Um, young people are the leaders of um, tomorrow or in the very near future, young people will and should be participating in um, the leadership, mm -hmm. in activities based not only con in country, but also at the micro level, at the village and community level. So what we have done is that we have been able within one year to attach 2,005 young people as CSOs to support village development. I have already mentioned the amount of finances we invested in that. But more than that, we have also trained more than six, almost 69 young people in ICT, um, training them as trainers to be able to manage and to execute the, the, work, the opportunity um, for ICT and internet connectivity in 200 communities. We have also additionally began training of 80 young um, Amerindian youths. Um, we will license them in driving and we will also ensure that they have training in servicing various vehicles, heavy duty and light vehicles. We will also, well, it's in progress right now, train them in solar um, installation and maintenance. Mm -hmm. So for the year, we have trained um, in the skill six to nine ICT trainers. Um, and we are on the ver right now we have 24 others that are currently being trained and the year is not up as yet, but they will graduate after the, the year. Mm -hmm. And we have 160 um, young people who are in training now both at the, um, the driving and also maintenance. And um, by Thursday, Friday, we are starting a batch of 80 to, 
for solar insulation and maintenance. So that is one of the biggest achievement whereby we have opened up additional opportunities for Amerindian youths, both male and female or both genders. Another um, important aspect that we have supported is that we have continued to ensure that the presidential grant is um, executed on time. Mm -hmm. Um, over the last five years, what has occurred is that many communities did not benefit from presidential grant because of the system of returning cash at the end of the year. And if you do not um, generate or provide a level of support to village councils to come in early with their proposals, it, the likelihood of them not um, collecting their presidential grant can become a failure of that program. So we have also been able to ensure that all the projects within the 2020 budget and most of the project within 2021, um, that is looking at the year um, span, we have been able to have those villages access their presidential grant. That, those presidential grants um, are invested in various activities ranging from so social productive um, infrastructure like bridges, small bridges, walkway, um, school kitchens, etc. Um, to economic projects like fuel depot, village shop, cattle rearing, um, chicken poultry business, into mining, into forestry, buying wood misers, etc. That will boost the economic activity so that income can be, um, can be generated, um, even though it's not at a, a large scale level, at the village level. So those are two things which I believe we have achieved um, more, more or less. But in addition to that, what we have done, we have supported the program which is under the Prime Minister's office, um, the ICT program, we have been pushing and we have been able to have two to four villages um, totally expending um, their support, financial support, to preparing the facility mm -hmm. to receive the internet um, connectivity equipment so that those villages will be able to be connected in the very, maybe even before, the, um, the, in, within the next month. Many right. of them have already begun to um, be equipped, coming to mind, Parima, mm -hmm. etc. All right. So I know um, you're talking about all of the major projects that the ministry has embarked on and will be uh, doing going forward. Uh, let's talk about some of the challenges that the ministry may have encountered within this first year. Before I move to the challenges, just for a second, I want to say that the other major project was the um, agricultural support, where more than $573 million were invested in tractor, trailers, implements, accouchements, bait, and agricultural tools such as um, mist blowers and um, chainsaw to cut farms, including um, weeding machines and seeds. So agriculture has also been one of our major achievements within the year. Um, our challenges. Of course, COVID has been one of the major challenges in us um, executing um, expeditiously some of our work mm -hmm. because, for example, we were not um, able to conduct what is usually um, expected um, by leaders, that is the National Tushaus Conference. We were not able to conduct that. Um, and the expectation is that if COVID does not um, subside significantly, um, it would put a threat to us not being able to, again, hold a, a huge forum where all leaders can be brought together. So that is one challenge in respect to us. But that does not negate the fact that um, leaders have access to all the ministers now. Um, they have access to myself. We are working aggressively in the fields, meeting with leaders. And um, from the media itself, you will see that we were able as a team, a cabinet team, to reach out to the hinterland areas at many fronts, um, COVID, 
at the um, distribution of the school uniform um, allowance, the because we care benefits that goes to parents for their children, um, and generally um, our government has a track record of engagement with the people, whether they are congregated or brought together, mm -hmm. or whether they are in their communities. All right, so um, now looking ahead for the year to come, what are some of the goals that the ministry wants to achieve within next year? Um, if I go from, from August to July, it, it may very well um, be what you're asking, but usually budgetary um, cycle is like from January to de December. Mm -hmm. And, and so for next year, I am intending, um, according to our um, manifesto, to ensure that all of our commitments to the people are, are actually being um, executed. In fact, we have been able to achieve, if not all, within the year. But we need to enhance it. And to enhance the support that we give to women, um, to ecotourism as another major economic um, activity that can that has great potential for um, Amerindian villages um, we will be looking forward to more support in to more support and guidance to villages and communities who will want to work in those direction um, women particularly because what has happened is that we would provide an engagement with the village council mm -hmm. with resource to um, funding. Many village councils sometimes do not put on their agenda women's mm -hmm. development. So I see that as one of the major um, support that we may want to give in the next, in the future and within the next year also. Women are the ones who remain at home, who um, have to look after the farm when their husband mm -hmm. goes into the mining or forestry or even into other areas looking for employment. Right. Because Amerindian villages still have a low level of um, economic activity to absorb everyone or every able-bodied um, person. So they are still the trend of um, the, the males going out of the village and the women are there. Um, and they do not only have to be confined to um, survival methods of ensuring the family is survive the absence of the other the other partner, but they also need to develop skills. They need uh, resources by which they can um, carry out other activities, whether it's economic or social, and we want to look at that. We also will want to promote the um, language revival um, support. Um, there are some coastal communities which have generally not um, kept their language. Um, for one and more reasons, and we have started when we were in government before to support the language revival program so that children can continue to be able to be taught their language, especially the Arawaks, the Carib language, um, and now more so we have an integration of some, of some um, migrants um, who speak a lot of Warao who has to integrate into communities where they are now located and so for them to for them to communicate adequately in school and among the, their new households that they are work, living with mm -hmm. now or they we will have to also probably promote more um, support for the our language to be to be um, used in in the coastal areas so um, we we will continue of course um, enhancing agriculture taking it to a different level because right now many of the villages are subsistence agriculture. Coastal areas or coastal villages have more opportunities to enter into um, the commerce mm -hmm. with farm products. So we'll have to support them too to ensure that they can compete with the coastal farmers. Um, so those are some of the things that we will have to um, work at and of course making every village computer literate so that they will be able to co be connected and that that will revolutionize not only their um, knowledge but also their economic um, future.
All right, well, Minister, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your one year in office and projections for the years to come. You have been watching One Year in Government with Minister of Amerindian Affairs, the Honorable Pauline Sukai.